I have the privilege of introducing Angelica Cruz. She um, heads our HR department, uh, recruitment, benefits, classification, compensation, pretty much the whole gamut. And um, she's going to give a presentation of our very successful um, pilot program. Um, to get started, though, she wanted us to see a little vignette here. You'll start it? Okay, there you go. Thank you, Ingrid. Appreciate the introduction. So if you are wondering um, what the pilot summer internship looked like at the Santa Clara Valley Water District, I'm going to show you a very brief video of an intern and her mentor on a typical workday. Sure, I was just playing around a few things. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead? Yep. <laughs> wow. Brilliant. There you go. What did they have in the net? Fish. <laughs> I'm assuming. Okay, so today, um, today I'm going to present on how you can bring this type of real life work experience to your interns at your agency. Um, our goal was to create an internship that crossed the entire agency, but we didn't do it alone. It was a collaborative effort with different divisions, um, with water utility. Thank you, Ingrid, for taking the lead on this pilot program. It was a huge success, and you were a big part of that, so thank you for that. We worked with watersheds and obviously us and human resources. So the district being one of few agencies that manage both water supply and flood protection, as well as being stewards to our watersheds, we wanted to make our pilot summer internship a program that crossed all these facets. So initially, a business case was developed to identify the needs and challenges that we wanted to address in this summer intern program. We wanted to provide, most importantly, real life work experience to these interns because in fact, a recent study that was conducted by CNN last year as well indicated that interns would rather be unpaid in exchange of getting hands-on experience. So we wanted to make that connection. We also wanted to support the district's entry-level succession planning efforts. As was said earlier in the introduction, 67% of our workforce is going to be eligible for retirement in three years. That's not that far from now. So we need to start looking ahead and planning now. And what we're doing also is by building our employment brand and student pipelines with the local universities and colleges. And so we're hoping that with that, the schools can be our advocate to attract the top performing students. So that ultimately we can increase interest in future entry level positions here at the district and we also wanted to differentiate from our year-round student program. We have a different program that's eligible for student year, students year-round. We wanted to focus one that was more on learning. So the emphasis, as I mentioned, was on learning. Uh, what we did was every single intern had a mentor, very similar to what we've been hearing this morning. And these mentors were responsible for participating in the selection of the, mentor, of the interns. They provided personal career growth experiences. So they shared their experience on how they got to be where they're at now. And they gave the opportunities and identified projects for the interns. There was also a very simple to use uh, learning plan with objectives, and the learning plan was developed jointly between the intern and the mentor. And what they did was they identified um, the nature of their assignment that was related to the study that they're in. So, and I'll show you some examples in a few slides of what some of those objectives were like. We also had an orientation day, and the orientation day gave was on their first day. It was an opportunity for all the interns to meet and greet and see each other. They were given an overview of the district, uh, what we do, and how they're going to be part of the program. The components of the learning plan were also discussed and the events calendar. There were a lot of events that happened over the summer, so they were given that at that event. 
resources available to them, such as our library system that's online, since they would be doing a lot of research. There was a demo done on the library system. And the, the day ended with a campus tour. So there was a tour where they saw our solar panels that we have in the parking lot. They went over to vegetation management, um, and they saw our percolation ponds. So they can get a feel for what the water district is. We also had a treatment tour of our Santa Teresa treatment plant, and they were able to see the SCADA computer screens and how the flocculators operated, so they can, again, see what it would be like to work in a water career. They were given safety training in addition to the office safety worker, like slips, trips, and falls, and how to operate safely in the work environment. Some students also received, based on the nature of their assignment, uh, confined space training or personal protective equipment kind of training. And the internship ended with a big graduation presentation. So each intern was required to give a presentation on what they learned throughout the summer internship and their accomplishments. And they gave that presentation to the group along with all the mentors. An overview of our summer interns, uh, a total of 22 participated. And you can tell they were evenly distributed throughout the district. So there were nine in utility, eight in watersheds, and five in administration. We also had a variety of disciplines who participated in the program, and we posted not only on our website, but also on Baywork, CalOps, local universities, and to, uh, to attract the minorities in this program, we also posted on the Math and Engineering Student Association, which is comprised of minority students at San Jose State. So that helped us to get that diversity that we wanted to obtain in this uh, pilot program. Some of the learning plan elements, again, was developed jointly. Uh, and I'm going to show you a couple examples of true objectives and tasks that were identified for each of the interns. You know, keeping in mind that the, the tasks had to be uh, experience related. But the mentor was also required to rate the intern on judgment, initiative, quality of work, and communication. So they were getting that direct feedback from their mentor at the end of the program. They were also required to give them feedback on how to aid them with their future career endeavors. So here's some examples. Uh, and you can see, again, keeping in mind that we wanted to have the objectives to be real work related. Uh, there's a watershed objective up there, watershed student, and he or she was responsible for understanding and really getting involved with one of our creek projects. Another student had to review hydrologic, hydraulics and geotechnical estimates, go visit the site so they can make that full linkage to the actual project. A water utility intern was required to review our procedures and then make a recommendation and determine what are we missing at the treatment plants. So again, they're doing hands-on work. And the last example is a business degree student. They were required to do cost comparisons, conduct benchmarks, and participate in our financial analysis. At the end of the program, we also wanted to see how did we do. So we surveyed our interns and our mentors, and we had an overwhelmingly very positive experience. It was a huge success. Uh, most of the interns responded to the survey, and a resounding 94% rated the program to be good and excellent, and they felt it was very valuable. It was challenging work, and it kept them interested. But again, very high number, 89% said that they felt that they really contributed to the business of the district, that they felt acknowledged, they felt appreciated, and they felt it was valuable. And they were certainly recommended to their friends. Our mentors were also surveyed. Now, we had 22 interns, but some interns had more than one mentor. And that's why there were 35. So a little bit less than half responded. And all of them indicated that the quality of work that was being received by these interns was high. That is a huge, huge success for us. And 93% said they enjoyed sharing their personal career experiences and would certainly do it again. The only thing was, because the internship was a little limited, uh, they would have wished that they had more advanced notice to conduct and allow them time to participate in networking activities. 
So once we finished the program, it's now September, October, we decided to do a lessons learned with the team that helped us help put this program together. And last year's efforts were decentralized. So each division did their own internship and management and administration of that internship. For cohesiveness and clarity, one of the lessons learned was let's centralize this program and hand it over to human resources as the lead. Having an annual budget and having it planned in advance would also have been helpful. And to also give more clarity to the program, we should have the program formalized because it was a huge success. Last year, we started recruiting a little bit late in the year. It was in the spring or so. So we found that we were up against some tight timelines. So recruiting earlier would have been to our advantage. And because we did start so late in the year, the internship was only for two months, July and August. Uh, it would have been nice to have it a little bit longer. And to allow mentors a little bit more time to allow their interns to participate in activities. So what are we doing for 2014? I'm very excited about it. So we are centralizing the program in human resources, but we found that it was very valuable to work with our partners in the, these divisions. So we're continuing that partnership, and we are identifying them as HR liaisons. Ingrid happens to be one of those. <laughs> We also wanted to give it a formal structure, so we have now developed guidelines, roles and responsibilities, clearly identifying the responsibilities of the HR team, the HR liaisons, the mentors, and, their, and the interns. We have timelines with key milestones, so we have now identified January as our working development month, February as our outreach month, March is our interview and selection, and then in April, we're going to be doing the uh, preparing for the onboarding, and then the internships will start in June. We have also put in for a budget, so we're planning ahead. We're planning for 20 interns this year, keeping it about the same as last year, and giving it a budget of 181000 So that means paying each intern $15 per hour, working full time from June through the end of August. We've also expanded the internship by planning it ahead. We went from eight weeks now to 11 weeks. And we're outreaching much earlier. We're also doing all the application submissions online, and they'll go directly to Human Resources, where we will personally screen them and disseminate them to the appropriate divisions and HR liaisons. And we're expanding our efforts to community colleges. We did not do that last year. So we'll be including Gavilon and De Anza and Foothill and Evergreen, West Valley, all the local community colleges. We also want to make this a really exciting time for the interns. We put a lot of effort and money, as you can see, into selecting these interns. So we want to give them an official offer packet, a congratulations letter with some sort of water district memento, whether it's a water bottle or just something fun to keep them interested and engaged between April and June. We don't want to lose these interns between that time. So we want to keep them engaged, stay in touch with them, see how their studies are going, how their finals are coming along, and see how we can just send them communications and, again, keeping them engaged. Um, earlier today, there was a suggestion about giving mentor training. We want our mentors to be our inspirational leaders. We want to give them the expectations and what we want them to do as mentors. It's not just giving an assignment and that's it. We will give them that training in advance this year. We're enhancing our learning plan to be more academic related as well as personal growth and skill development. So topics such as critical thinking, leadership, uh, problem solving, that'll be added to the learning plan, as well as um, how to be more self-confident, have self-awareness, and appreciation and sensitivity of diversity in the workplace. A new thing we're also adding this year is an intern team challenge. As we all know, we all work in teams, wherever you work at, and what we want to do is put different interns from different areas, give them a real life water district problem or issue, and have them as a team provide a presentation to us with their best strategy that they're recommending. So that'll be exciting. 
We also want to increase our frequency of check-ins with the interns. Rather than just waiting to the end, we want to stay in touch with them and the mentor the entire summer, just checking in. And the networking activities and field tours and graduation presentation, those were all a huge success last year. So we will continue to do that. And our program evaluation, we will do our survey at the end. What we also we want to do is continue engaging with them even after the internship. We want to keep that relationship with them. We put a lot of money and effort into them. In support of our succession development efforts, we want to make sure that now they are qualified under this internship to, uh, for entry-level positions. So we want to keep that engagement with them so that they come back to us when they graduate. That's it. Questions? You know, the question was, what's an example of a problem they might work on? Uh, we haven't identified that yet, but we would be involving our executives in giving us some sort of example. It could be anything from a creek project, to reservoir issue, to a, the budget process. But that hasn't been identified yet. How many of the interns from last year's program were you able to hire? Our hiring process is that they have to compete when it goes external. Uh, so we have not hired anyone yet from that summer intern program. And that's primarily because we haven't had as many entry level positions um, available yet. But we have not hired any of them. However, some of them have converted to our year round intern program. For going forward for this coming year, have you tied the 20 positions to expected anticipated vacancies? We were just talking about this over yeah. lunch. <laughs> we are looking at our hiring processes currently to identify how, if, how and if we can incorporate these interns or all interns into the hiring process. That is part of our evaluation this quarter. You mentioned that you're adding uh, or expanding outreach to the community colleges. How yes. are you doing outreach before? And my other question is, um, uh, are you looking at um, expanding that partnership with the community colleges so that the interns can get credit or that there would be, it would be tied to certain classes that, are, that they're taking or would be taking? Mm. Okay, so I believe your first question was, how did we advertise? Last, yeah, last, last time? Okay, so last time we advertised um, on our website, on Baywork, Cal Ops, and the local university career boards, as well as the minority math and engineering group at San Jose State. So that's how we advertised last year. We will continue that effort, uh, but we want to outreach to the community colleges as well. And what that means is their career boards, and maybe talking to their deans or head to department heads, to be our advertising as well. And then uh, are you looking at uh, providing credit through the colleges that they're attending or other types of kind of partnership to kind of strengthen and build the kind of an academic component to the? As far as school credit, we're not doing that right now. Doesn't mean that we won't. It could be an enhancement for the next year, but for right now we're not. Uh, that has come up before and something that I'm sure we'll be taking a look at. Yeah. And Angelica, if you don't mind me jumping in, yeah. we did um, mention that in our pilot program, if students were interested in doing a project related to their studies, we would be open to it, but we really put it in the hands of the student to do that legwork and come to us with their idea if they had a professor or somebody that would work with them. But we didn't have the bandwidth to be able to actually come up with that liaison between the universities. But if the student had it, we would have looked into it. And the other, um, place where we advertise where we got a lot of interest, and I think I'm sure all organizations do that, but sometimes we don't think about it, is internally. Our own employees said, hey, I have a neighbor whose child would like to you know, be an intern, so we obviously did internal posting as well. Um, I really love your idea about the students making presentations mm -hmm. you know, about a problem. Um, what, do you have senior staff there, or what um, staff 
um, or, or watching the presentation because I really want to steal your idea upon my supervisor's <laughs> approval who's sitting in front of me. Um, but I really, really like the idea. I want to hear All a little right. more about it. Well, last year there was a graduation presentation. So the graduation presentation was open to all the entire management team. Uh, could attend that presentation. So yes, there were unit managers, mentors, executives, anyone could attend. Uh, this year, we want to keep that same presentation at the end. However, we want to add that team challenge. And we will certainly be inviting the entire management team, including the executives, so that they could hear the presentation of what the interns uh, recommend. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.